If you're anything like me, juggling a business, a family, a to-do list that only gets longer, you know how hard it is to find time for the big stuff that actually moves the needle in your business. This is where AI comes in. Now I get it, some people are still skeptical about AI, but the truth is, if you're not using AI strategically in your business, you're going to get left behind. Now in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how I use AI to save at least 10 hours a week in my business so that you can do the same, whether you're a publisher, a creator, a service provider, or some other type of business owner. Make sure you stick around till the end because I'm gonna be showing you how to create your own custom GPTs. This is going to be like having your very own team of virtual assistants at your beck and call. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Rachel Harrison Sund and I help people turn simple book ideas into passive income streams using the power of print on demand. Now the AI tool that I use the most by far is ChatGPT. And the one thing I'm using it for regularly is ideation and research. And you can see here in my own ChatGPT dashboard, I've got an entire folder dedicated specifically for research and development in my business. Now this is a little pro tip for you. You can set up projects in this left-hand sidebar and that's a great way to keep all of your chats organized. You can see I've got YouTube content, research and development, email, clients, social media, and a whole bunch more here. And I'm using ChatGPT constantly all day long and without being able to put things into projects, it would just be a complete mess. Now for ideation, you can come in here anytime you're a little bit low on inspiration. So if you're an author, you can come in here and ask ChatGPT to help you come up with some potential book ideas. If you're a creator, you can ask it to help you come up with blog post ideas, video ideas. Now the trick is you wanna make sure you're telling ChatGPT who your ideal client avatar is first so that it knows what type of ideas to give you. If you just ask it to give you 10 random book ideas, who knows what you're gonna come up with. So let's go ahead and give it a try. All right, so please come up with 10 nonfiction book ideas aimed at middle-aged women entrepreneurs in the tech space. Okay, we've got Power Pivot, reinventing yourself and your career in tech at 40 plus. The Feminist Firewall, how to lead, build and scale in tech without burning out and on and on it goes. Now, not necessarily all of these are gonna be good, but some of them will be. And at the very least, it's gonna help spark some new ideas for you. Now I can do this for my YouTube channel as well. I could just say, hey, I have a YouTube channel aimed at this specific group of people. I wanna, I'm thinking about creating videos around this topic please give me 10 or 20 or even 30 different ideas that I could use. Some of those ideas are gonna be really good. Now again, the other part of this is research and I use ChatGPT for research all the time. Now, one of the things I used it for recently, which was just so mind-blowingly helpful, was setting up a spreadsheet. I am really crap at spreadsheets. Now, this spreadsheet got a little bit complicated with the formulas and I was able to upload my spreadsheet into ChatGPT and I said, look, I wanna get this information from this sheet of the spreadsheet in this cell and I wanna do X, Y, Z with it and I want it to show up on this other sheet in this other cell. I mean, I, it was so complicated, I barely even knew what the prompt was to give it, but it instantly gave me one formula to try. That didn't work. I said, that didn't work, can you help me out? and it gave me another formula to try and that worked. Now, I don't know how I would have been able to figure this out on my own. As I said, I'm absolutely crap at spreadsheets, but using ChatGPT saved me. It probably would have taken me hours to figure this out and it was able to tell me the exact formula I needed just by having a look at my spreadsheet and me telling it what I needed to do. This I was super impressed with. The next thing I use ChatGPT the most for in my business is for helping me with writing. Now, if you're a self-publisher, this means you can get help writing your book description, actual portions of your book, a weekly newsletter for your audience. I use ChatGPT for help with my YouTube scripts. This alone has been an absolute game changer. So I might take one of the ideas that I got from it when I asked it to give me some ideas for YouTube scripts. And then I can actually ask it to write me a complete script. Now, once it's done that, I will take that script and I'll go through it and you know I'll make my own changes. I'll add my own personal stories. I'll add or remove various points. I'm not using it completely as is. I'm making a lot of changes but it saves me so much time just getting that first draft out of the way. In other instances, I may have already started to write a script. I might be doing some research. I'm collecting various bullet points and they're all kind of in a jumble. Then I can throw those bullet points into ChatGPT and I can ask it to arrange it in a structure and create a YouTube script 
from all of those research points that I've collected. I used to write four long form YouTube videos. That would take me about a week to fully map out those scripts. Now I can get all four of those scripts done in just a few hours. This has been such a game changer for me as a creator. And if you're a creator, I would highly recommend that you experiment with this. And then the final thing that I use ChatGPT for when it comes to writing is helping me to write emails. So I've got a weekly newsletter, I've got promotional emails, I've got affiliate emails that need to go out. And so again, I'm using ChatGPT oftentimes to just help me come up with a first draft. You know, I'd like to write a specific email about, you know, maybe it's the email that's going to be going out to promote this video. I might just feed ChatGPT the hook of the video, the outline, and I'll say, you know, help me write an email that I'm going to use to help promote this video to my audience. And then it'll give me a rough draft of that email. And again, this cannot be overstated. This is a first draft. Do not just copy and paste and call it a day. For me, what I always want to do, I want to get that first draft out of the way and then I'm going back through it. I'm adding my own personal stories and anecdotes. I'm removing lines that sound robotic. I want to make sure it legitimately sounds like it's coming from me, but it just really helps speed up the creative process. I also get help with my client deliverables. Now I'm working on this really cool project with a one-on-one -on -one client of mine right now. I'm helping her to create a short nonfiction book based on all of the frameworks that she's created for her digital course. So this is what we did. I took all of the transcripts from all of the lessons of her digital course and I uploaded them to ChatGPT. Next, my client and I created a table of contents that we wanted for her book. We uploaded that to ChatGPT. Then I took a series of her newsletters, uploaded those to ChatGPT, and then what I asked it to do was, based on all of the transcripts from the course, please map all of that information to the table of contents that I provided and use the sample emails for the voice that I would like you to write in. And then ChatGPT took all of that information and it wrote a complete first draft of our book. The results were phenomenal. Again, first draft. My client is now going through and making changes to each section. All right, this is not a copy and a paste and now we're done and the book is out there in the world. My client is extremely busy as a seven figure business owner. This might have taken weeks for her to actually sit down and write this book from scratch, but we used all of the material that she has already been creating over the course of many years. This is her complete body of work and we've just mapped it out into the structure that we want and the first draft is done. A project that would have taken weeks took only two or three days. Now she's going through and refining it and we're gonna be that much closer to the finished piece, which is her nonfiction book and I'm extremely excited about it. Now, one more way that I use ChatGPT before we get to the custom GPT, which I'm gonna show you how to do, is data analysis. Now, one thing I recently started doing, which has been so helpful, as a creator, I go into my YouTube dashboard, I download the analytics in CSV format. I can upload that into ChatGPT and I can say, please review these analytics. Tell me what's working. Tell me what's not working. Give me ideas for videos based on this data. And it will do just that. It will analyze the data on the back end and then it will produce a list of video topics based on that data. Okay, finally, let's talk about how to create your own custom GPT. So what is a custom GPT and why do you need one in the first place? Well, custom GPTs are basically like a tailored version of ChatGPT that's created specifically to aid you with a very specific task. These are really helpful for repetitive tasks that you've got to do over and over again in your business. And I'm going to show you an example of one of the custom GPTs that I use, but first I'm going to show you how to set up your own. So when you're inside ChatGPT, you'll notice on the left, this is where all of my custom GPTs live. Now, in order to create your own, you can click on explore GPTs and then hit create. This is where you get to configure your GPT. So so you'll give it a name, you'll give it a description, and then you're going to give it very specific instructions. And this is going to make a lot more sense when you see how I've used mine. Um, and then you can enter some conversation starters, upload any files that you need it to refer to, and then you'll just hit create and it'll be ready to go. So this is probably looking as clear as mud. So let's go ahead and take a look at one of mine. And I'm gonna show you how I've set it up and then I'm gonna show you how it actually works in action. Okay, so the newsletter whisperer. From messy voice dumps to polished newsletters, this GPT helps you brainstorm, refine, and write weekly emails that sound like you on your best day. 
Just talk it out, this assistant does the rest. So here are all of the instructions that I have given this custom GPT. So I've outlined, what is this GPT's role? Okay, and then I've said, you're my weekly newsletter assistant, helping me brainstorm and write my weekly email newsletters. Each newsletter starts with me talking out loud, using a voice message in the ChatGPT app, which I will show you. And from there, you help shape the raw idea into a well-structured, engaging email with my signature tone and voice. Then I've clarified what this ChatGPT should say and do. All right, so I'm telling it, when I give you a voice message, or a typed version of a brainstorm, follow this three-step process. One, identify the theme. So it's going to briefly summarize the main idea or story I just talked about. It's gonna clarify the potential theme or lesson if it's unclear. Then it's gonna ask if I'd like to explore this direction further or pivot. Now step two, it's going to prompt me to go deeper by asking me three to five custom reflection prompts to deepen the idea. And I've asked it to focus on the lesson behind the story, how this relates to my audience, what emotion or struggle it taps into, a clear takeaway for the reader, whether there's a tie-in product, a resource, or a CTA. And then step three is it's going to write the newsletter. So once I've answered the prompts, either typed or with my voice, it's gonna then write a newsletter draft using the following format. All right, it's gonna give me a curiosity-driven subject line, an engaging intro story, a relevant quote from someone, core lessons, insights, takeaways, or action steps, and then a clear call to action. I'm also instructing it to keep it short and punchy. I'm telling it that my tone is conversational, witty, heartfelt when needed, and always relatable. Avoid fluff. I've also included my brand voice. So I've told it my brand voice is conversational, witty, personality packed, a little bit cheeky, always helpful, story driven. All right, I've told it it can use metaphors, anecdotes, and casual language, but always keep the message clear and useful. I'm telling it to avoid dry, formal, or corporate speak. Humor and heart are both welcome. Then I've included my ideal customer avatar and I've given it all of that information. Now, once you've got all of those instructions in there, you can hit close and then you can choose some conversation starters. And I'll show you what those conversation starters are, how they appear in just a minute. But the conversation starters I've chosen here are, I want to brainstorm this week's newsletter. Can I talk it out? Here's what's been on my mind lately. Let me tell you a quick story, blah, 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 blah. And then if I had any other files that I wanted to upload, I could do that here. And that's it, then it is ready to go. So let's go ahead and see this in action because it's very cool. So this is where the magic happens. So I've opened up the ChatGPT app on my phone and I've pulled up my custom GPT, the newsletter whisper. This is gonna help me write my weekly newsletter. So I'm just gonna hit the button and start. I would like some help writing this week's newsletter. I've got this idea around imposter syndrome and I've been thinking about this because I've decided to write my very first book that is going to be authored under my personal name. Right now I've published hundreds of books, but they've all been under different brand names. This is gonna be the very first book that I'm gonna be publishing under my name. And I'm feeling kind of afraid because people know me as a self-publishing expert and I can't help thinking like, what if the book that I publish under my name doesn't do very well? Will that destroy my credibility somehow. I feel like there's gonna be a lot of pressure for this book to really succeed and become a bestseller and do really well. And so I think there might be a good lesson there that could be appropriate for my newsletter this week all around the idea of imposter syndrome. So I'd love to talk that out. Absolutely. Let's dive into it. The fact that you're stepping into the spotlight with your own name is huge, and it's totally natural to feel that imposter syndrome creeping in. You've built a reputation as a self-publishing pro, and now the stakes feel higher because it's your name on the cover. Here's a potential angle for the newsletter. Share your personal journey and the anxiety that comes with putting yourself out there. Highlight how even seasoned experts can feel like imposters when they push their own boundaries. Emphasize the importance of embracing that vulnerability and seeing it as a sign of growth. You can also weave in a lesson for your readers. Imposter syndrome often shows up when you're leveling up. It means you're challenging yourself and moving into new territory. Encourage them to see their own fears as proof that they're on the right path. How does that sound as a starting point? 
That sounds pretty dead on. I'd love some sort of a rough draft that I can work with afterwards and, you know, include my own stories, but I'd love if you could draft up maybe a quick intro hook, a, a quote that talks about imposter syndrome. But for the body of the email, I'd love it if you could help me come up with three or four points around how to deal with imposter syndrome. You got it. Here's a rough draft to get you started. Subject line, Embracing Imposter Syndrome, my first book under my own name. Intro hook. They say, if you're not feeling like a fraud sometimes, you're not pushing your limits. Well, here I am, pushing mine and feeling every bit of that imposter syndrome. The first step in dealing with imposter syndrome is recognizing it. It's okay to feel like you're in over your head. Acknowledge that feeling without letting it paralyze you. This fear means you're taking on something meaningful. Reframe your perspective. Instead of seeing imposter syndrome as a sign of inadequacy, view it as a sign of growth. Okay, now I spent probably five or 10 minutes talking back and forth with ChatGPT, which I doubt you wanted to sit around for. We would have been here all day. But the point is I've talked it out and now I'm heading over to my computer screen where I can go ahead and check out the full first draft of my newsletter. I'm gonna say this again. This is not the final product, all right? This has just helped me get over that initial hump of getting my thoughts out and into some sort of a structure. What I will then do is I will pull this out and put it into a Google Doc, and then I'm gonna rewrite it and make sure that it is in my own voice. When I showed you the back end of this custom GPT, I did include my voice in there, but it's not gonna get it right, all right? It's gonna get it closer to what you would normally sound like, but there's gonna be stuff in here that I just wouldn't say. Just as a brief example here, all right? Like, hey friend, blah, 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 you know, no pen name, no alter ego, just, me cue the sweaty palms all right I would never say that all right so you do have to go in here and you do have to make sure that it sounds like you but again it's getting over the hump of creating that first draft so for me writing my newsletter that's something that used to take me between one and two hours now it's taking me like 30 minutes to an hour so it's essentially cut that time in half which is super helpful and I do want to mention I got this specific newsletter writing tip to create this custom GPT from a video of Ali Abdal's that I watch. Now he's got his own app, I think it's called VoicePal. That's what he uses to talk out his newsletter and then he plops that into ChatGPT and or Claude, which we didn't talk about here, uh, but it's an, another one very similar to ChatGPT. A lot of people use it specifically for writing. I don't have VoicePal and I didn't want to add yet another tool into the mix. So I'm doing it all right here in ChatGPT using the custom GPTs, which I just find so helpful. And you can use these, you can create custom GPTs for almost every task you can think of. Anything that you need to do over and over again, super duper helpful. Now, if you want to learn how to use ChatGPT to write a full length book, check out this video here. If you found today's video helpful, please give it a like and subscribe so that you don't miss next week's video or any of the other ones coming up and hit the bell. You'll be notified next time one of those videos comes out. Thanks so much for watching. See you next week.